You are now watching lesson 28. In this lesson, we will explore input, processing and output. In order to plan or create a proper application, you need to know which part or parts of your application and code will receive the input and which part will do the processing and finally which part will produce the output. The input refers to all the values that your program must receive or read. In other words, everything that the program needs to be able to continue further. This input can be provided by the user. He or she can type the information into edits, rich edits, input boxes or any other component that allows the user to type text values. The user of your program can also provide the value by selecting it from a combo box, or a list box, a checkbox or a radio button. After the user provided input, your program must read and interpret those values for further use. Input can also be received from other third-party sources like reading information from a file or a database or getting information passed in by another program or a scanner or even information that was downloaded from the internet or any other network. For now, we will only explore input provided directly by a user, either by typing it or selecting it from components provided by our programs. The next important function of our program is to do processing. Processing refers to the actions or tasks that our programs must perform on the information to make it usable, compatible and meaningful. Most of the time it must process the input that was received and most of the time it is done within your code. Processing can be conversions that must be done like converting numbers to strings. It can also be calculations or comparisons that your program must do. Programs perform these conversions, calculations and comparisons by executing functions, procedures and operators and by following the logic or algorithms that a programmer provided in his instructions. Programmers provide the processing logic in code, normally in specific event handlers for example. To do a calculation a user must click on a calculate button, therefore the button's on click event is triggered. The on click event of the calculate button must be linked to an event handler that contains the code that performs the calculation. If you are not sure about events and event handlers, please go back to lessons 21 and 22 in chapter 1 and make sure that you understand it. In those lessons I explain in detail how components, events and event handlers work together. The next important function of your application is to provide output. Output refers to the feedback that the user will get from your application. Most of the time the feedback is information or results displayed on the computer screen. But it can also be results or information that is sent to your printer or saved to a file or a database. Your program can produce various types of output. Normally we think of output as text messages displayed on labels, panels, list boxes, memos and dialog windows. But it can also be things like changing a component's color to green to indicate success or red to indicate failure. Anything that is produced by your program that keeps the user informed can be considered output. Input, processing and output normally work together. In other words, there is a relationship and a flow between these three functions. First, your program normally requires input values to know what to process. In other words, conversions, calculations and comparisons cannot take place if the program doesn't have values to convert, calculate or compare. The program will then normally produce the results of the processing as output. This is done by displaying messages, changing colors or fonts, or by printing or saving the results. All this is actually as simple as baking a cake. <laughs> okay, I've never baked a cake before, so I don't know if it is really that easy. But I assume that the process or overall logic to bake a cake is easy to understand. Let me explain. If you want to bake a cake, you have an idea what the cake must look like. You know how big it must be, how it must taste, and what type of cake it must be, for example a chocolate cake. When writing a program, you also have an idea what it must do. You know its purpose and more or less how it must look and so on. To be able to produce a cake, you need ingredients. You need sugar, icing sugar, eggs, milk, flour and so on. The ingredients is the input for your cake. For a program to work, it also requires ingredients. The ingredients is the input that your program receives. But, even if you have all that yummy stuff to bake your cake, it will never be a proper cake if you do not process the ingredients. Obviously you do not want to throw everything together and then eat it. The eggs are still raw and your mixture will be full of eggshells. To get a proper cake you must first take the ingredients and process it. You do that with a recipe. 
The recipe is the formula or algorithm that contains the instructions that you must execute. Like how to mix the ingredients, breaking the eggs and removing the contents from the shell. It also indicates the temperature of the oven and the duration that the cake must stay in the oven. After you take the cake out of the oven, you make it look good with icing sugar and other decorations, like cherries on the top. Mmm, I'm getting hungry now. The recipe is the processing of the ingredients. If the recipe is correct, and if you follow it step by step, you shouldn't have any problems, right? Well, I hope so. The program's recipe is the step by step instructions provided by the programmer in code. It dictates how the input will be mixed, measured, calculated, converted and baked. The end result is a beautiful cake. You can now display it to your guests and hopefully when they try it, it is delicious. That is the output. The program's output is also the end result. It looks good, it's informative and it works well. In the next lesson, I will teach you how you can identify the ingredients or input of your program and how to write the recipe that you must follow to produce the required output. We will do that with something we call IPO tables. I'm going to get something sweet to eat now. But I'll talk to you again in lesson 29.